to talk about random numbers. Random numbers are commonly used in programming for things like games. Um, so these are commonly used for games, simulated pro simulated data, so or programs. So let's say you're trying to simulate something, you might need to generate some random numbers to run your simulation. So simulation programs. Statistical programs will often, you'll often need to generate random numbers. Computer security, so with encryption, you'll often be generating random numbers. So, and this would be computer security. So let's just look at how this random number works. First of all, there's, this, there's a C++ function that generates random numbers called rand. And so this is a C++ function that generates random numbers. This requires the, the CST DLib <laughs> header file. So the one issue with this RAND is each time that the program runs, it generates the same random number. So this will generate the same random number each time it runs. And so you can see what the problem with that would be. If you're generating the same random number every time the program runs, it's not really all that random. So the way that we fix that is we use this random, this, so we need to seed the random number generator. So this rand works by generating a random number, but it, if, if you don't seed it with um, something, it's always going to seed it with the same number, and so it's always going to generate the same random number. So we need to seed it with a random number. So we do that with this S rand. So what this does is it randomizes the results of rand. So this randomizes the results of rand. And so basically S rand accepts an unsigned integer and we can give it any unsigned integer we want but I'll I'm going to tell you in a minute what's what what's normally given to it and this unsigned integer is acts as a seed to for the random number generator so we want we want to give it different seeds each time the program is run because different seeds generate different random numbers so different seeds generate different random numbers. What, what is commonly used for this is the this time. So this time, basically we're going to see this with the time function. And this is part of the standard library. So what this does, this function, this time function returns the number of seconds since midnight on January 1st. 1970. So you can see how each time the program is run, this time is going to return a different number because there's been a different number of seconds elapsed since January 1st, 1970. And you're going to pass zero as an argument. Pass zero as argument. If you want to use this time function, you have to use, you have to include the C time header file. So the so the S the CSTD lib is for rand and S rand, and the C time is for the time function. So if we want to limit the range of random numbers, we're going to use this equation. And so what the the way this works is you have a variable that's your max value, and a variable that's your min value. So let's say you want to limit the range between like one and ten then your max value equals 10 and your min value is equal to 1. Let's look at some code with the random numbers. So I want to look at a, a dice, a program that simulates rolling dice. Yeah, so let's say we want to simulate rolling two dice. We would need to generate two random numbers that are between one and six. So I want to go to this code. I think this is kind of cool. So I want to show you. This is in the book too. All right. So this is program 
3-26 in the book. So the way, the, probably the best way to use this formula for setting the range of your random numbers is to just set a variable. So in this program, well, first of all, we have the CSTD lib because we're using rand and srand. And we have the C time because we're using the time function. So with this min value and max value, I would actually usually set these as constants because you're not going to want them to change while the program's running. So we would set, um, and I don't know if we've specifically talked about this yet, but if you put this constant in front of your variable, that sets it to a constant and it makes it so it can't be changed while the program's running. So if someone tries to change that min value, if you, like if you try and change the value of min value or max value, it's, it's not going to change and give you a compilation error. So we set the values 1 to 6 because we can get a, the minimum value for a dice is 1, maximum value is 6, and then we set two variables that are die 1 and die 2. Then we're going to get the clock time to seed our random number generator, so we get the clock time. And then we seed the random number generator with this S rand, and then see out rolling the dice generate our random numbers for die one and die two, and then we're going to just going to see out what those numbers are. So depending on what you're doing with the program, you might want to display those to the user, or if you're generating a random number for another part of your program, then you would just go ahead and use this. So let's compile this and run it. So I'm going to compile it. Uh, dash O. And then let's run this, so PR3. And so it gives me three and four. Let's run it again. Three and six. Well, that's not looking too random. Well, there it is, five and four.